قال إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا You look at the story of Jesus on whom be peace. Look at the annunciation, how the angel Gabriel came to Mary and uh, told her that she will be the mother of a child, although she is a virgin. A beautiful story, told in the Bible, told also in the Quran. And in the Quran, Mary asks, how can I have a child when no mortal has touched me? And she is told, that is easy for Allah. When He decides a thing, He only says to it, be, and it becomes. You go to the Bible, and you read essentially the same story, but with a few problems. Because there when Mary asks the question, she is told by the angel, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So that that which is born within you will be called the Son of God. Now the imagery that gives a person is the imagery of God coming upon Mary, the manner in which human beings do it. Now, some of you might be surprised at that, but that is the image that many people have obtained from this passage. In my experience of meeting Christians and debating in a number of different platforms, I have stories I can tell you that will confirm this. How some Christians view this. The theologians will say, no, don't think of it that way. But listen to the words of the text and see how different it is than the Quranic wording. And then it says, so that that which is conceived in her will be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Sam himself says that the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus. Amen. Now tell us what that means. And how does that relate to God? Now, the Qur'an gives us the essential message that came to the previous prophets and reinstates that, repeats that for us, and this is what the Qur'an means when it says it confirms the previous revelations. That is the meaning of the word Yasaddiq. It confirms that which came before it. The, the entire Bible, from the beginning to the end, stresses that there is only one God. But there are verses of the Bible which would seem to indicate something else. And many people today read their Bibles uh, like an insurance contract. They don't go for the main message. They don't look at the big picture. They go down into the fine print to make sure there is not something there that they are missing. So what they do is they find one little verse and they say, but look, this looks like it means Trinity. And then they take that. Whereas, that is a problematic teaching in itself. Nobody has been able to explain satisfactorily what exactly is the Trinity. How can God be three and yet one? How can you have three persons, each of whom is completely God, so that's God, that's God, that's God, and together they are still only one God. The Quran rescues us from that by telling us that there is only one God, وَلَا تَكُولُوا ثَلَاثَةَ And do not say three. Just say one. Now as we review the Gospels, we realize that over time, the Gospels were written not in the lifetime of Jesus on whom be peace. Yes, there was only one Gospel. Sam is right about that. But over time, there came to be four Gospels, which are four attempts to record the life and teachings of the man and prophet Jesus the Christ. And over time, as you look at these Gospels, you see that the story about Jesus was evolving. So that in the last of the four Gospels, you have the kinds of claims which Christians are very fond of. For example, that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. That Jesus said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. That Jesus said, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is in the fourth Gospel that you find this. Now that you're saying Amen, think about why it's only in the Gospel of John, but not in the other three. If Jesus had said these words, Christians... If Jesus had 
If Jesus had said these words, you would expect that right from the very start, Christians would have been saying, Amen. And every Christian preacher would be preaching the same words. Every gospel writer would be writing the same thing. They're very important words if he said them. But why did Mark not write them? Matthew not write them? Luke not write them? Only John wrote them, the last of the four gospels. That is because the story about Jesus was evolving over time. And his image was going around like a snowball. The more you roll it around, the bigger it gets. So that the image of Jesus appears bigger and greater in the last of the four Gospels, the Gospel of John. That is not the original picture. The Quran brings us back to believe in that original picture. He was not the Son of God, but a servant and God's Messiah. The Quran brings us back to the original truth. Now what about this idea that Jesus died for our sins? The Bible says that Jesus died as a ransom for many. The Quran corrects that by telling us that in fact everyone is responsible for his own deeds. If you sin, you repent, you turn back to God, and like the prodigal son, you will be forgiven. That was the original teachings of Jesus before people started teaching that He died for the sins of humankind. Now what does it mean that He died as a ransom for many? If He died as a ransom for us, that means He paid the price with His blood so that we can be released. True? But to whom did He pay the price? To the Father, in which case the Father appears cruel and unjust for taking the blood of His Son? Or did He pay the price to the devil, in which case it looks like the devil is on equal bargaining terms with God and that ain't right either? Nobody can explain these concepts, the Trinity, the Sonship of Jesus, or the ransom sacrifice of Jesus. Come back to the message which the Quran has given us. Now, people tell us that the Bible is the pure Word of God. And they say, we should turn away from the Quran, we should go to the Bible. And my uh, promise to you is that as you read the Quran, you will find a world of difference. But it is possible that some people are not familiar with the Bible. I often think that when people like Sam come up here and they preach to us that the Bible is 100% the Word of God, they're not quite familiar with the Bible. I would like to point out to you that in fact, if a book... If a book describes history by gratuitously including sexual imagery, those parts of that book cannot be the Word of God. And I would say that the Bible often does this. And one place in which it does this, and I'll have Sam read that out for you, is in the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 23. So I would ask Sam, as he's asked me a few questions, I would ask Sam when he comes up here next time to read for us from Ezekiel chapter 23, starting with verse number 1, going all the way to verse number 21. And if not that much, then start from verse 11. And if he doesn't have time for that much, start from, just, just read verses 20 and 21. Well, we'll be okay. And uh, in fact, why don't you read this from this children's Bible? Sure. So that uh, folks can be sure what is there in the children's Bible. Young Explorer's Bible, New International Version, I'll leave that with you. It'll be here when you come back. Just read for us from that. So now, in sum, folks, how much time do I have? One minute. One minute. In sum, what I've shown, in fact, is that... Although the Quran speaks very positively about the Bible, it also tells us where the Bible has gone wrong. But on the whole, the Quran gives us a very positive way of looking at the Bible. The Quran is not here to condemn the Bible, but the Quran is here to introduce light. You do not introduce light by driving away the darkness, but you introduce light by turning on the switch. And this is what the Quran does. The Quran did not come condemning the Christians and the Jews and what they believe in, but introducing the light. And where it became necessary, the Quran made itself clear. On the other hand, if we want to find out tonight which is the book of God, just read the two and you will find that the Quran is that book of God. On October 31st last year, I'll never forget the date, a young woman, a Canadian woman came up to me and she decided to embrace Islam and after I gave her the opening words that brings a person into Islam, I asked her, what made you decide to become a Muslim? And Sarah, this young Canadian woman said to me, when I read the Quran, tears flowed down my eyes and I realized that this is the Word of God. I invite you to read the book of God.
تبدت من أهلها مكانا شرطيا فاتخذت من دونهم حجابا فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا قال إنما أنا رسول ربك لأهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا فحملته فانتبذت به مكانا قصيا فأجاءها المخاض إلى جذع النخلة قالت يا ليتني قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا وكنت نسيا منسيا فناداها من تحتها ألا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحتك سريا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرا سوء وما كانت وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني 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 بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى ابن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون وإن